Hi everyone. Okay, that seems to work. I hope everyone is uh, is fine. At their place. I hope you can hear me well. If it is not the case, uh, please let me know in the in the chat. Oh, I see I did not update. I didn't do a couple of uh, setup steps. So let me let me change the the name of this uh, of this session. Okay, exactly that. Five ways to five ways to import and create networks in Giphy. Okay, all good. So I don't see any comment in the chat. I hope you do hear me. If that's the case, don't hesitate to uh, to write that you can hear me. I think I think that's okay. I've tried to put some background music. Oh, I think it's not. Yes. Uh, if it's too loud or whatever, just let me know. Uh, what else do I need to check? Uh, tuk, 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 tuk. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh no, the, I should change the pointer of the mouse to make it more visible on screen. That should be better. Okay, so I'm gonna wait just a couple of minutes before we, we start. The topic for today is really to, uh, to go through a, a series of essential ways to create networks in Giphy. Hey, Mathieu. Super glad to see you there. The, because what we have seen yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last week, was a workflow where um, we explore a network. But as you guess, it's really, uh, it's really a convenience. Uh, usually, you don't have a network to start with. Uh, you have to create it by yourself or to import it from uh, from a place, and that's uh, not easy or straightforward at all. So today we're going to see five ways uh, to do it. Uh, it. It's far from a, a complete overview, especially in the sense that uh, you have many software that uh, can help you create uh, networks and. And I, I did not review this software. I suppose it's really worth uh, a session uh, in itself. OK, so maybe we can just uh, start. Uh, I have my, uh, my list of the five uh, 
ways. And uh, I suppose what we can do is just open Giphy. Yeah, great. So this is Giphy completely naked. Um, and the question is, how do you uh, uh, yeah, bring some networks in it? So the first method we're going to see is uh, uh, we're going to start from the most simple and then we're going to move on to a more complicated or uh, yeah, uh, advanced methods. But let's uh, start with the, the really straightforward. So this is Gephi and uh, in this way it has, it has nothing opened. So what you should start doing is open a new project. Uh, when you, so what I just did is click on File, a new project. When you do that, the, the, uh, you have many icons that were disabled and they become uh, enabled. In particular, uh, these two icons there um, in the shape of uh, pencils, uh, these are tools you can use to uh, um, create uh, networks in a manual way, which means, so let's do it. Uh, I just click on the, oh, and I think I have zooming capabilities. Or do I? Uh, yes, this one. Yes, it's not super, so maybe there. Yes. Uh, so that's this icon. You click on it to select it, and that enables you to create nodes simply by clicking on the canvas. So let me click at the center. Oh, no, it doesn't do nothing. It doesn't do anything because I, I had selected it before. So let's do it again. I select it. And now you should see, especially if I zoom in, you should see that uh, I can create nodes. So creating a network uh, consists in creating nodes and edges that connect the nodes. Edges are links. And what you can add as well are attributes. So um, things that will describe the nodes and the edges. So that's why I started by you know, creating the nodes, uh, but we are not finished. Once some nodes have been created, you can create links to connect them. And uh, the icon to create links is the one just above the, the airplane, right? So now I have the edge creation pencil uh, selected. I'm going to click on a node and then on a second node. Oh, yeah, it works, but it's just not visible at all. How can I make the... Let me see if I can make the edges. Can I make the edges? Yeah, I can make the edges a bit thicker. Uh, let me show you how I did that. I just move here. I just move this slider, and that makes the uh, that makes the edge or the links uh, thicker. So anyway, uh, I can continue then just clicking on a node and then on a second one. Oops, didn't work. I suppose that when I uh, use the slider, uh, the uh, the edge oh, the edge creation, oops, that's there, still selected, but I think it got buggy in some in some way, so I select it again, I zoom in, and I start again. One oops, one node, another node, doesn't work. One node. Oh yes, it's just uh, I, I I did not click right on it. That's the reason, I suppose. Yes, uh, and so on and so on. Oops. So you have to click again when you missed some. Uh, uh, or, I, or I could actually. Oh, funny. Yeah, great. I can just zoom in. Uh, well, as I would do. That's easier here. Um, why? It works in some cases. 
you have to click super precisely. Let me check on the chat so that I can see. So I'm going to finish there on, on this uh, way to create networks. As you see, it's, it's a very uh, small scale uh, approach. You can't create big networks like that. And in this way, uh, it's super hard for you to, uh, uh, to, to basically uh, you know, add a lot of information. Um, I think it can be useful in, a, in some very particular settings when you would, uh, maybe if you would have a meeting and you would uh, create a network on the fly while somebody is discussing, you know, somebody is discussing um, agents or people and keep mentioning connection between them. Uh, you could go and use this method um, where you would uh, uh, yeah, create the, the, the network on the fly. The, the only issue is that it's pretty cumbersome. You have to do what I have done. And then uh, just to remember or just to identify which node is which, you would have to switch to... Uh, can, I, can I do that here? Yes. Uh, you would have to then switch to this kind of tool, the editor's mode, where you would click on a node and fill in some uh, information. Like, uh, so I'm going to take countries as an example. Like, OK, this one is Mexico. And then you know, moving to another node. And this one is Argentina. So. Uh, uh, again, I would insist that uh, I, I'm just presenting this method uh, for the sake of, um, of showing that uh, even from the graphical interface in Gephi, you, can, you have dedicated icons to uh, uh, create nodes and edges. And thanks to the, let me zoom again, thanks to the editor's mode that you click right there, you can then edit the nodes information while well, you're supposed to. You can edit the nodes information uh, while you are in the visualization mode. Uh, but it's pretty specific. The other way where you can uh, create networks directly from Gephi uh, in a manual way is to, so let me delete this one. I'm going to I'm going to uh, close this project. I do not save it. I open a new project, so file a new project. The other way you can create a network manually directly from Gephi is uh, by doing it in the data laboratory. So let me show you what I did. We were in the overview, and we switched to the data laboratory. The data laboratory. I insist in order to uh, play with it, you have to have a, a project being created as I did. Otherwise, the icons are going to be grayed out. So once you are uh, in a new empty project and that you are in the data labor, labor, laboratory, you can simply click on Add Node and oops, can it? Yeah, add node, and it's going to open a pop-up window asking you for the name of the node you want to add. So it's Poland. Why is, is it, why can't I see it? Weird. <laughs> oh, because I'm the. OK, I just created a node, and you can't sit in the data table. And the reason is that I'm in the view that shows the ages. And at the, at the moment, I have created no ages, no age. So if you click on nodes, it's a view of the nodes only. And yes, Poland has been created. And you can continue. Uh, let me. You can continue with uh, Brazil, and so on and so forth. 
Um, then you can add ages. Uh, you are able to create ages only if you have created at least two nodes. Uh, that makes sense. So let's click on add age. And it, it offers a very useful um, um, you know, input uh, window where it asks you whether the age should be directed or undirected. Uh, it's up to you. And you can create self loops, so edges that uh, point uh, a node to itself. Um, but of course, you can uh, you can create regular nodes from one uh, regular edges from one node to another. Uh, this is an edge kind. This is a new development uh, dating from uh, uh, Giphy 0. Point, uh, something 0. 0.6 maybe. Um, it's a pretty advanced use case in uh, network uh, analysis and network exploration, but basically you might want to uh, distinguish several categories of edges um, so that you can filter and keep only uh, one type of edge or again for many different reasons. So we might have, uh, I mean, it's optional, right? I just, I could just create the, the age, but I could just create an edge kind like um, commercial partner, saying that the connection between Poland and Brazil is of a particular kind. Uh, it's because they are commercial partners. Um, we don't see the age being created, and the reason is that we are in the table showing the nodes. So let's switch to ages. Let me uh, zoom out a bit. Yeah, that's not super visible to you. Yeah, so I can't really zoom, uh, zoom exactly on the top of the window, but uh, it says that the node uh, ID 0, it was Poland, is now connected to the node of ID 1, it was Brazil. The type is undirected, there is no specific direction to the, to the relation, and uh, the kind of the age is commercial partner. Um, just to finish on that, uh, on you know the manual creation of networks directly from Gephi. Um, I did not mention the creation of attributes. Uh, you see that we have added a kind of attribute for the edges, and it's the edge kind. But it's super particular in the sense that again it's a kind of a special attribute in. Uh, that you find now in, in graph databases. But you might want to have multiple attributes describing your, your edges, not just this one. Maybe an attribute uh, specifying the date, you know, the year when Poland and Brazil um, started their commercial relation. Uh, how do you add an attribute? Uh, again, Giphy provides from, uh, you know, from within the the software ways to do it and this is there add column so make uh, let's see what, what it does let me drag that there yes so be careful that uh, you have to be in the ages table if you want to add an attribute to the ages uh, if you wanted to create uh, a new attribute for the nodes, make sure you shift to, to the nodes table before. But in any case, you have this reminder in, in bold that you are, you are about to create a new attribute for the ages. So give it a title, uh, year of, year of, um, or start year. And and the type of the uh, of the attribute, you can create attributes that are uh, textual attributes. So in uh, computer science, uh, textual attributes they are called uh, strings. 
Uh, but in this case, what we want is uh, an, an attribute uh, which is um, a round, an, you know, a round number like a year, uh, and it's called integer in IT. So I just click on this drop-down menu, and you see that you have many different kind of uh, types. Uh, and oh, you can't see it really, but Integer is actually the second from the top. So I, I select Integer, and again, Integer means a round number, you know, not a decimal number. And for a year, that's what we would expect. And I just clicked on OK, and now when we when we look at the top of the table for uh, for the ages, we see that we have a new column, which is start year. And you can, I suppose, click on it. Can I click on it? Oops, I'm not in the... Can I click on it? Yes, I, just, I can just click on it and uh, type... Um, so I'm going to be super embarrassed. When was Brazil... Uh, you know, uh, when did it become a, a, a nation? Um, so let's put a recent year, not to embarrass ourselves. Poland and Brazil started having strong commercial relationships. Well, after Poland uh, left uh, the Soviet bloc, let's say, so in 19... Okay, completely random, right? But just to... Well, maybe it's not supposed to be today uh, a kind of... Uh, session on, on attributes, but you see that if I was, I say that the start year was supposed to be a number, uh, so if I try to write a number with a decimal, it should not work. Yeah, it's highlighted in red. It accepts just round numbers. And if I was to, to write some text like the 20th century, it shouldn't work either, yes. So, this one is good. Okay, so that's it for the, and I should move much faster. Again, I try to do one hour sessions and, uh, uh, and it's already uh, 20 past three. So this is how you can create um, networks from within Giphy. Now, if you are curious, you have seen or that above since since I this uh, since the start of my conversation in and why we were in the data lab, we've seen an icon saying import spreadsheet. And the in, thank you, uh, uh, pardon, <laughs> uh, merci Mar uh, Martin, and thank you Martin. So we can now uh, move to uh, a new kind of import, which is. Uh, Giphy providing you uh, uh, some support to import uh, networks from, from outside of Giphy. And um, Excel spreadsheets are a usual location where you would uh, uh, maybe work uh, and create networks. So if we click on import spreadsheets, let me drag that where you can see it. Um, you see that uh, it opens a very simple window asking you to open an Excel file. Um, it would also work for CSV files, um, um, but I'm gonna uh, just discuss the case of Excel files uh, uh, for the sake of time. So I have prepared for today a uh, uh, an example of a spreadsheet so that we can so that we can discuss it let me find it and open it great you see it it's opening and oops let me show you so i have thank you Matt. I didn't catch what was the icon, but uh, oh yes, I suppose it relates to the fact that it's Excel. I don't know. Uh, so I created, I've created two tabs in this Excel spreadsheet. I should move much faster. Uh, a table with nodes, sorry, it's there, and a table with 
ages. So the table with, uh, and I really encourage you to work this way, but we're going to see another case where you have just ages. So that's what you see in the tables for nodes. Um, you need, and please uh, be careful, you need some specific, the first line, this one, should be super specific. What you need is at least these two first things. ID with a capital uh, capital I, I, I think so, but uh, just to, to be sure, uh, make sure you have a capital I, so ID, and label. Uh, you might be able to work without labels, but again, just to be sure, have a column called label with a capital L. ID, the, one of the constraints you're gonna have here is, so you can put uh, um, numbers or text, you know, strings, the only constraint is that you should have a different value for each node. If you have three, and let's say three again there, um, uh, Giphy is going to uh, throw an error saying that, oops, saying that, that uh, you have twi uh, twice the same value. So make sure you have different values there. Um, the second uh, column again, should start with label with a capital L, and then this is where you would have the, the, you know, the easiest way for you to identify a node. The ID and label can have the same value, uh, and sometimes you know, it's completely easier to, to have the same value for both, uh, but you might have like one, two, three, four, whatever for ID, and then um, some text for the label that makes sense to you. The label can be the same for different nodes. And all of that is optional. These are additional attributes that you can uh, add to your nodes. So that's super, super useful, and that's one of the killer features of Giphy as compared to you know, other network uh, visualization software. Uh, Giphy actually loves and makes a lot of room for um, for you to to include attributes uh, in your networks. Actually, Giphy is is made for the exploration of these attributes. So don't hesitate uh, adding all the things that uh, make sense in your uh, to describe and enrich your nodes. So again, as a rem as a reminder, we were in this tab in Excel that I called nodes, you can call it whatever. The second tab is, you know, your, the links uh, in your network. And it should have, absolutely should have in the first row, um, something which is called source in the first column and then target in the second column. Uh, don't forget the capital S, capital T. I'm not sure, but I think weight is necessary just in case, just put it weight with a capital W. And then I think that type, you know, the age, uh, the type is unnecessary. But again, just uh, to be sure, just add it with a capital T and type can be of uh, two or three values, and directives as it is here, directed as well. And the last would be mixed, um, but uh, I, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Mixed would just mean uh, 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 well, a mix of directed edges and undirected edges. And then where first, where did, uh, where first meet and and any other column you would add on the on the right, these are the attributes to your edges, and you are super free and super welcome to add many, many uh, attributes. They can have missing values, uh, as far as I remember, it's pretty flexible. So once you have that, and as you see, it's, you know, um, it surely involves uh, um, uh, some, uh, uh, some a uh, lot of work on your side to to get from the data that you have originally to uh, the data that would fit in these uh, nodes and edges tabs. So a lot of data handling. Once you have that, Giphy uh, does the rest for you. And very simply, as we're going to see right now. 
so I come back to Gephi. Uh, we were at the you know at the, the end of our previous example. So let me just um, delete the previous example. I just close the project, and and no, I don't save it. I open as always. Don't forget to file open a new project. We are in the data lab, right? Uh, as we were before, and you click on import spreadsheet. Yes, the window opens on my other screen. And you select the file that uh, I just shown, showed before. And you click on Open. Once you've clicked on Open, nothing happens on my side. Charming. <laughs> Why that? I don't know. Let's do it again. Oh, maybe let me close my Excel uh, file. I think that when I prepared this uh, session, I think it caused issues. So back to Gephi import spreadsheet again. It opens this window. You click on Excel. New Excel spreadsheet open. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so it asks you what sheet, you know, what tab or sheet, sheet is the proper name, uh, what sheet in the worksheet would you like to, uh, to import? So, you know, I had a sheet called nodes and another called ages. So yes, let's start importing nodes. So it recognizes your everything uh, that you had in the file and make sure that the nodes are imported as nodes. Sometimes, you know, for some reason, it's going to just uh, show you edges as a, as a default. So nodes should be imported as nodes. You're going to have plenty of red everywhere on the, on the window if you don't do that. Click on Next. Next is pretty important. I mean, all sensible options should be uh, already uh, selected, but just make sure that things that should be numerical are indeed, uh, you know, uh, imported as numerical values. So years of experience is something that should be an integer, so a round number. And um, Giphy has detected that yes, it was an integer, so fine. But if it was a string. Uh, for some reason, make sure to select it as an integer. Rating, oops, you don't see it there. Maybe you're going to see it better there. Yes, right. Look at the top of the window. Rating is uh, something, it is a number with decimal values. Uh, and you can, in this case, import it as a double. It means, you know, a, a number with decimal values. Uh, you could also select... Uh, Float, but I don't. Oh, or, or you could select float, which is just like double, but with um, uh, less many uh, uh, decimals. But anyway, double is fine. And then you just click on on OK. Let me show you the big picture. OK, or finish. It shows you a report, which is fine. Uh, it asks you to import it as a new workspace, but you can just append it to the workspace we are in at the moment. And ta-da, you have your uh, three nodes. Uh, I should go faster. So now you click again on Import Spreadsheet. We're going to open the spreadsheet again, but this time, same spreadsheet, right? But we're going to move to the tab with the, with the edges. So from no, Notes. We move to the tab I, I have name. I had named ages, and as you see, no, no, it's not a notes table. It's an ages table. Um, oh, <laughs> what 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 does it say? Uh, found rows with empty source and or target. I suppose we don't care. Uh, why? We don't care. It's the the one it shows is the only one I had. So maybe uh, there are some. Uh, empty rows after it, but I'm fine with it. 
Um, again, be super careful at this step. And as you see, wait, it identified it as a string, so as a textual value, and it's absolutely not the case. It's something that can, ha that can have a decimal, it's a number that can have decimal values. So I should select a float or a double, but float is fine. And where, we f where, where the two nodes met, it's the name of a location, so it's a string, so it's fine. Uh, let me go back. I didn't have the chance. Oh yes, and it doesn't let me choose whether it's a directed network or undirected uh, type of edges because it's already written in the, in the type column. So no need to repeat. Uh, and finish. So it ignored uh, an edge which was which had some empty values, but yes, I don't care. I was not. I append it to the existing workspace, right? And if I move to edges, no, didn't work. Hmm. Let me proceed again. What did I do wrong? I don't know. So I open again. Uh, I open the edges tab as an edges table. It found something weird. I'm gonna have a look at it if I can't fix it. The weight is a float where we first met is a string. I finish it. Okay, severe, maybe just, maybe it means that it's not gonna proceed to the import. I try new workspace, I, uh, oops, you don't see it here. You know, I try to say new workspace instead of append to existing workspace, hoping it's gonna change something. And it does change something, the edge has been imported. Uh, Oh, it has been imported, but the nodes have been lost. You know, the, basically, let have a look there. Workspace one is where I had created the nodes. Workspace two is where I imported the edges. So the edges there have no um, relation to the nodes I had imported in workspace one. Uh, it's not at all what I want. So I suppose I guess what happened. Let me show you. We'll see, right? I'm just um, investigating. I suppose what happened is that I have, I must have left some weird values in my Excel file below. Yes, exactly that. You see the four value there? It's because I typed four on my keyboard for some shortcut. But it, I mean, by mistake, I just added a four there, and it completely, uh, and Giphy was, I suppose, uh, thinking that it was uh, an edge, a line for an edge that was not. So I just remove this value, I go back there, I kill workspace number two, which is the edge alone without the, the nodes. So yes, I did this workspace. We are back to workspace one with the three nodes. And I import again, let me zoom a bit for you. I import the spreadsheet. I want to import the edges. That's the edge we find. Oh, and you see, I don't have any uh, uh, warning anymore. So we should be fine, a float string, finish, yeah, append to existing workspace, super important, you know, so that it's actually uh, um, put in the same place as the nodes I have started with, and we should be good. The nodes that we had are still there, obviously, and the ages, if I click on ages, we have our age. Oof. Very glad. So as you see, even for some very toy example like this one, we can have some weird issues. So as usual, you know, it's working with data. It's never completely uh, 
straightforward and you have many things to, to fix. Um, I wanted to, to add a last note, but as time is running so fast, um, I just finished two out of five. Um, just let me add that you can import, let me close that one, this project, and open a new one. You can import ages alone. You don't need to import nodes uh, in the first place. So let me show you super quickly. Again, I just take my Excel import example. What you can do is, even if you have no nodes in Giphy yet, you can shift directly to ages. So you import an ages table and you can import that. It's going to create the nodes for you. The, uh, the tricky issue is that it's going to create nodes that are going to be called 1 and 45, you know, the source node and the target node. So it's not super informative. But in some cases, you know, that's all you need. You just need to, to have uh, the network without much information on the, on the node. So for you, it might just be enough. Uh, so you do that. Uh, let me show you the report window. You know, two nodes are going to be created and the age as well that you have. And that's it, the age is there, the two nodes are there, completely empty, right? The, the, let me show you that. The label is, is empty. And when you look at the overview, uh, that's what you get, you know, a super uh, empty and not super informative network. But that's quicker than create importing nodes, then ages. Okay, we're finished with this part. Now for cool stuff. <laughs> so I wanted to really start with this um, not super exciting, fancy ways to create networks because in practice and especially with the import from Excel, this is how, how we work most of the time. Uh, um, so not um, sophisticated, but uh, super classic uh, workflow. Um, for the next steps, uh, I didn't know exactly when, where or how I wanted to, to present this, this one, but uh, I think it's a good moment to basically get more energy and excitement. I wanted to present briefly the uh, plugin by, by Mathieu, Mathieu Tote. Uh, that you uh, uh, that was there at the beginning of the stream, uh, at least. Um, so Mathieu is a long time contributor for uh, Giphy, uh, and uh, he created. Salut Mathieu, super glad to have you. And Mathieu created um, uh, a plugin that helps you uh, collect tweets uh, from the stream of Twitter. Uh, and import these uh, tweets uh, directly to, to Giphy. So where Mathieu is uh, really, uh, I mean, provided a lot of value is that you have to keep up with the evolutions of, of the, uh, to keep up with the evolutions of the way Twitter uh, makes their tweet available. And uh, without being too technical, Twitter has an API, which is the way a computer can access uh, the tweets in uh, large volumes. And Twitter has an API, which has changed um, a lot in, in, in the last two years. Uh, so Twitter has moved to the version two of the API. And you don't have, I mean, it's, uh, it's growing, but um, not everybody is up to date with this new API. And Mathieu actually uh, updated his uh, plugin uh, so that uh, you, the users of Giphy, can enjoy the benefits of the latest version of the API of, of Twitter. So it's immensely useful, especially that this new version of the API provides uh, uh, more uh, sophisticated ways to, to query the, the the stream of the, the, the tweets. Many things to say. Uh, just a note on the stream. The stream, accessing the stream of Twitter means that you are not asking for 
um, you are not asking for all the tweets from, uh, you know, from uh, uh, that mentioned Barack Obama uh, last week, um, um, between this time and this time. The stream means that you access the tweets as they appear, you know, at the time when you are um, using the plugin. So it doesn't go back in time. It's really the, the stream of uh, the current stream of tweets. Um, so uh, this is what you get an access to. Okay, now I should, uh, and the second thing I wanted to add is that this plugin and the way to use it is uh, you can have very advanced uh, ways to uh, query tweets. And I think that uh, we should have a, a dedicated session on that. Um, you know, Mathieu, hopefully at at the time when uh, these um, weekly sessions I have started on Twitch get stabilized and you know I get a, a kind of pace and 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 then I uh, in this case I'm going to be able to uh, investigate how to invite guests in the most uh, uh, e easiest uh, way uh, so that we can share sc uh, screens discuss and stuff so I'm just providing for today a very quick intro so how do you use it? First, you have to be in Gephi and you have to install the plugin. Uh, so, oh, interesting. Can I can I do it? Yes, because my project is. I don't have a project. Just to make sure, always open a project. So installing a plugin, tools, plugins. Uh, no, the, Zoom is not perfect. Plugins, then you go to available plugins. Then you click on, on name to rank them alphabetically and then you scroll down until you find the Twitter streaming importer. Uh, be careful that you have two Twitter streaming importers. The one I show, it, I show here is deprecated and actually there is a notice on the description so this is not the one big alert big flash this is not the one you should um, install in my case so where is the good one right uh, in my case I, I don't see it in this menu because i have installed it already so as i, I have installed it it does not appear in the available plugins in my case i'm gonna find it in the installed tab let me zoom in. Can you see it better? Yeah. And yes, that's the latest. Well, where is it? Yeah. Let me highlight it. That's this one. Twitter streaming importer v2. V2. So make sure you, have, you use the v2 uh, version. And as I explained, that's the one that is updated for the newest version of the Twitter API. So then you have to click on. Yes, great, uh, Mathieu. Um, so then what you have to what you have to do so again you will find it in available plugins in your case uh, you have to select it so I take another one again uh, you select you tick or select it and click on install right so I'm, I just clicked on Oracle driver just to show you of course it's not this one you just select the Twitter importer you install it it's free uh, the is completely uh, safe, uh, it's perfectly fine. And then you have to restart uh, Giphy. Giphy will actually um, invite you to restart the software. And once you have done that, so this is Giphy. Once you have done that, a new tab appears next to the layout tab on the uh, middle of left of the screen. This tab is called, uh, has the name of the plugin. I don't know if we can see it clearly. Not super clearly. So the name of the tab is Twitter Streaming Importer V2. And the thing you have to do to start using it is, uh, and it's very well, uh, it's obvious. Step one, set up your credentials. Your credentials are something you have to, um, to create on the Twitter uh, website, you have two important steps. The first one is you should have a Twitter account. And so many of you have that already, but if you don't, you need a Twitter to create a Twitter account first. 
you need a phone number for that. I mean, they do verify a bit your, uh, your account when you create it. And then once you have an account, you can create an app, an empty app, right? Just uh, something that is called an app and which will give you access to this plugin. So to create the app, uh, I think, yes, let's click on credentials. Uh, I hope my, my uh, let me switch off my screen so that uh, if there is, if there is my credential completely open, uh, you don't see it. So let me switch that just for a moment. Yeah, I did, I did well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when you click on uh, Setup Credentials, you know, the button, it opens um, a window where you can copy paste what is called a token. And this token, simply you get it after you have created a Twitter account and after you have created um, uh, an app. Uh, Matthew says in the comments that I suppose you mentioned the app Ah, oh, no, sorry, sorry, I get it, Mathieu. Uh, I get it. Um, yes, I'm not, uh, my setup is not completely uh, ready for, uh, you know, all these uh, privacy features that you would, uh, that you would need as a streamer. I'm really, I'm really starting now. So um, what I was saying, I was saying that, yes, in this window, you just copy paste what is called the bearer token, you know, barbaric term, but you find it in the app you have created and you copy paste it there. And, um, and that's it, basically. Once you have done that, you can start uh, using it. It's super straightforward. There is no nothing else. So I was, as I, I'm not used to using this plugin uh, because I, I access uh, Twitter differently. But basically, what it asks you is a rule tag and a rule value, and I was a bit puzzled by that at, at the beginning. So, but it's super simple. We have seven minutes left. Come on, Clément, quicker. So the rule tag is just the name of your rule, you know, something for you to remember what your rule uh, does. So I'm going to call it testing rule. You know, we don't really care about the name. Can you see it on screen? Yes. Testing rule or rule for te rule test two, because I have done a test just before. And the rule value, this is where you put the query. So the query, you know, the search, just like you search on Google and you type stuff to search on Google, you can search stuff on Twitter. So the, the example I, I often take uh, to be sure I have plenty of, that I find plenty of tweets, I type Obama. Uh, as you see, that's what I did just before. Let me see if I can delete the previous rule. Uh, but I'm not sure it is deleted, but... Uh, anyway, the rule value is where you, you type what you, um, uh, what you uh, want to search for. And super important comment, at the uh, uh, for this example, I just ask for tweets that mention Obama, but uh, you can have complex rules, you know, things that exclude some terms and, and that need for two specific terms to be included, but in some ways and some location and some hashtags and some whatever, go and look at the documentation for rules to access the Twitter stream and just be amazed. Wow, super, thank, thank you, Mathieu. Yeah, exactly. I mean, go and check the, the link uh, provided by, by Mathieu. I'm going to copy it and add it to the, to the resources. Oh, let, let, me, uh, let me post the resources. Just the resources are going to be added in the comment to the YouTube uh, replay of this session as well. Uh, I'm going to add all the links uh, that you see in the comments. Uh, 
I, let me repeat, we are super lucky. So we have the creator of uh, the plugin uh, with us. So it's Mathieu Tote, and he contributes in the, in the comments to, to help us basically uh, learn how to use the, the plugin. Uh, so once you have this rule, again, just give it a name. That's the rule tag. Give it a value. I, I just use the, the most simple value. And then you click on add. Oops. And then you click on add rule. <laughs> and uh, and I think it and it's there right it's there rule test number two it has replaced the the one I had deleted before so we good and then the magic and it really feels like magic I think it's really a, a plugin that makes the best of Giphy and and the and the Twitter API uh, then you can start connecting Giphy to Twitter and Giphy will fetch or import if you want the tweets, and it will create, I mean, it's not about having a list of tweets, otherwise Excel would be enough, right? Uh, we want basically to have some, that Giphy uh, records and, and, and um, shows the connections between the tweets, but which connection? So you have the choice there. And honestly, Mathieu, I should give you the mic there because I, as I said, I just, um, um, Install the plugin. So the hashtag network, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mathieu, uh, uh, two tweets that the, that the plugin gets are going to be connected if they share the same hashtag. So, okay, we're going to just read what uh, Mathieu says in the, in, the, in the comments. So user network. What does it mean if like if the same user has posted two tweets or if the same user is mentioned in two tweets ah, in the same tweet okay in the same so it's not looking at authors of the tweets it's looking at the content of the tweet so basically if you have two tweets that mention the same person the same, you know, um, uh, Twitter handle. Oh, no, no, okay, I make a big mistake. I'm not sure, uh, Mathieu, I'm a bit lost. Like, how user to user, so you have, um, you have, okay, okay, I think I get it. User, like, let's try it, user network. User network, if you would have Barack Obama and Donald Trump mentioned in the same tweet, I will find two nodes, a node for Barack Obama, a node for Donald Trump, and they're going to be connected because they were mentioned in the same tweet. Okay, super clear, super clear. So that's the user to user case explained by Mathieu. Uh, so super clear, it, it creates connections between the users mentioned in the tweet and the user that authored the tweet. Okay, but let's have a look just to show you uh, uh, how, how efficiently it works. Um, one cool thing to do is to have the layout. If you don't apply a layout, the tweets are just going to, and the, the entities are just going to pile on uh, at the center of the network. But if you have Force Atlas running, it's going to basically, so that's what I do here, Force Atlas is now running. Uh, if you have Force Atlas running, it's going to continuously, you know, lay out the network. So, hmm. I won't do user network, I'm going to do full Twitter network to, to uh, because I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of volume. So let's get started. I don't see them even if I see the look at the count of the tweets, 63 nodes, 
Why don't I see them? There is something weird. I should see them right in the middle. Okay, let me stop. We have collected 180 tweets or entities at least. I stop the fourth atlas. I click on center the graph, but I don't see any random specialization. Thank you, Mathieu. Let me try that. So I apply a random uh, layout. Oh, yes, because they were all at the center, right? Mm, I suppose. Ah, you were exactly right. You were exactly right. Uh, so it's an issue where basically if all the nodes start at the same location, then the layout, the force atlas layout cannot apply its logic. So you have, as Mathieu suggested, first to you know, randomly spread the nodes a bit uh, wherever, like as we did there. And then, then the layout, the force atlas layout is gonna, wow, 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 fancy. Uh, then the layout works. Um, so we can go back to, so I stopped the, the stream, right? And I can click on start again and the thing is just gonna continuously collect new, uh, it's not super obvious, but honestly, uh, I, I'm, I'm zooming there. So it's, it's, as we speak, these are the tweets that get, uh, you know, um, tweeted and, and Gephi collecting them and importing them. So we have, we don't have much time yet. Oh, we are over, we are over time. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, so I stop the collection. I should stop the layout. I should click on center to find everything back in the center of the, of the, and you, you have two, you have two, well, you have multiple use case. One of the, one of the things, one of the ways it's useful is as we did, just to get a sense of the connections as, as they get uh, visible. Uh, but you can really use this uh, plugin for um, a, a reason, which is um, the one of collecting, uh, you know, without the visual interface, it's just a way to fill in this spreadsheet of nodes, and let me zoom in there, of nodes, but you have all the ages. Uh, as we try and discuss, and I think it really highlighted that we, we need to uh, invite Mathieu. Uh, uh, oh, but Mathieu, you have written the, there is the tutorial. Um, I'm gonna link to the tutorial. Uh, so we should invite Mathieu to basically have the a discussion with him. And uh, we should have a link that provides uh, a description of, you know, the different type of networks. Uh, yeah, Mathieu, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we know what is left uh, to do. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so many things to do. Um, so we should invite Mathieu and, um, you know, uh, we should write documentation. But once you have that, uh, you can, oops, not import a spreadsheet, obviously, but export, you can just export the table. Uh, export the table and it offers you to export it as um, a CSV uh, file, which sounds, maybe some of you don't know what a CSV file is, but a CSV file is a kind of file uh, that you can open with Excel. Um, maybe with a bit of work, but you can go directly from what you have collected in Giphy with this plugin to, uh, to Excel. You just have to go through the intermediary step of uh, using a CSV uh, file, uh, but you, you will find plenty of people who, who can help you uh, in that. Um, yes, 
Well, we, we are just at uh, point 0.3 out of uh, 5. Uh, the two, the two uh, uh, other functions I had in mind were uh, importing texts and importing uh, or creating uh, networks from, from lists. You, know, you have a list of items and, and it can be transformed into a network. Uh, but uh, just for the sake of staying at uh, you know one hour types of sessions, I'm going to uh, leave that for later. And these two these two types of of uh, of uh, these two ways to create networks, uh, you can find them in a actually in an app I have created, which and which is called no code functions. And the link to it is in the resources for this uh, for this session. So you can, uh, if you are curious and if you want to anticipate on the on the, on the Twitch session where we will see uh, these methods, you can by yourself go on no code functions and and try them. Whew. Well, um, that was nice. Um, I hope you found it uh, useful. Uh, I hope you're gonna uh, watch the part two uh, for the other ways to import functions. It's gonna, not gonna be next week. Uh, just check the schedule on the on the channel. Uh, and that's it. The replay for this session will be posted on YouTube. Uh, and the resources, the links, the useful uh, resources you can uh, need to import uh, networks in Giphy, uh, they will be posted uh, just below the YouTube video. Thanks a lot for attending. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, being active in the chat and a special thanks to, uh, to Mathieu for developing the plugin and for providing uh, lots of help for this session. Have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>